join me in welcoming Alicia. Gina, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, I did make it. I'm alive. I survived Eastern Europe. And I'm here to talk about uh, the lessons I learned managing, raising the funds, managing, and letting go of Chile's first seed capital fund 10 years ago. So here I am, a Venezuelan with a freshly new MBA under my, my bell my business plan, knocking on doors in a country where I've never been before, and it was a great, great ride. We've heard a lot of people talk about dreams, and what I found was that dreams are very useful when you feel helpless, but there comes a time in life when you need to make them real. So I want you to take a couple of seconds and grab that dream of yours, just grab it, and throw it to the back because we're going to make it happen. And this is my story. The first thing that I learned was that there's nothing inspiring about thinking small. When you decide to go on a journey, you transform yourself. And how many of you are entrepreneurs, have started a company already? The decision to make a company and the action that goes with it makes a huge bridge. It is harder to make the decision to make a company than not to make a decision to make a company. When we compare that to having a small company or a big company, we can see the gaps are different. If you're going to start something, start something big. Start something that is so big that you never thought you could achieve it. And every time you move forward, it goes like a ladder. So you move forward, and then you see this wall, and you say, OK, now comes the time to go up, and that's a very intense period, and then would come another time to go flat. I've learned to deal with a lot of people who think, well, you know, I'm smart, so I'm going to go and pick the low-hanging fruit. Um, I have some friends who said, I don't even want to go and pick them. I want to lay down, open my mouth, and wait for them to fall. <laughs> so if you're going to do something, nobody's going to follow you if you don't show any idea that is mind-blowing. So whatever it is that you do, just go big. Think big. The other thing that I learned was to leverage on passion. The problem that we have with academia is that we are learn, we learn to leverage on our skills. So we go through the process finding people telling you, you're so good at this, that's what you should be doing. And we start believing that. And what happens is when somebody tells us how good we are at something, we forget about what we really like to do. And we start conditioning our behavior to what we're good at. What we're good at doesn't depend on what we want to do in life. What we're good at depends on what other people are bad at. So what just happened was that we took our internal locus of control and we gave it to somebody else who's telling us what we're good or bad at because they're bad at what we do good. OK? I'll give you an example. I'm horrible with colors. I'm, I'm bad painting. Uh, and every time I see somebody who paints well, who's a good designer, I admire those people because I don't have those skills. So I keep telling these people, you're so good at that. You should do that. And what I realize is that we spend a big chunk of our life doing something that we're good at, but not thinking that life is really about building skills, not leveraging the skills that somebody thought that we were good at when we were kids or when we were in high school. That's why I want to transform education. So when you lever on your passion, you become unstoppable because instead of defending to anybody else that, yes, you're good at something, it doesn't make any difference. You just feel that you are having so much fun doing that that you want to keep doing that. And when you do that, you excel. You start learning things. And you just love doing that, and it transforms the people around you. But to do that, you cannot go solo. The Arabs have a, a, a saying that I love that they say, if you want to go fast, 
go solo. If you want to go far, go with others. But the, if you think about it, it's so profound. Because to go with others, you need to slow down. And that is a paradox. But you cannot transform the world by yourself. And we all need each other. We've heard so many people here talk about, where, where is the person of friendship? Because I've moved to so many countries. I'm like, oh, that's what I should have been doing. <laughs> and uh, in diversity and so much learning. And I learned from so many people that I realized, wow, you know, if I didn't have these people coming in my life or in my projects, I would have not been able to do what I wanted to do. And sometimes that also means giving up some leadership. And sometimes that also means giving up being right. So it ties back to being passionate about something. If you are cons constantly remembering about your skills, then you have to defend that you're good at something. If you want to do something that you're passionate on, you take somebody else's learning to improve what you want to do. It's a completely different way of viewing life. But when you bring somebody on board, you need to incorporate talent. And talent is, talent is made of three things. Experience, knowledge, and intention. You don't bring people that are kind to you and tell you, you're doing such a great job without giving you some help to do a much better job. And that is a very important difference because not everybody that wants to help you is able to help you. So you need to make that distinction. And when I talk about talent, I really like that concept because talent leads to excellence. Okay? For example, while we're here, we have Tatiana's team. Where's Tatiana? We have Tatiana's team, and they've done such a great job. I talked to her. I sent her an email at 3 in the morning because I have jet lag, and she responded. <laughs> and because she's passionate about this, and I talked to these guys before, and they respond. Excellence. They know what they're doing. So if you're going to incorporate somebody into your team, make sure they incorporate talent. Then what you have to do with that is when you have different pieces, you tie them together and you sit down to reflect and capture what you've learned. You have to build knowledge. And you don't do that for yourself. You do that to make the world a better place. So every time you, make, you take an action, you learn. If you don't share it with others, that is called intuition. If you share it with others, that's called knowledge. You need to build knowledge. The other thing that I learned is that we need to create wealth. This is very, very important for me because I grew up in a socialist country. And I never heard the word about economics. I was a scientist. Money was something people who didn't have a life had something to do with. Okay? And then I realized through life that the concept of creating wealth is very important. The problem that we have with many of our economic systems is that we have a dichotomy between capitalism and socialism. And capitalism is about numbers, and socialism is about uh, humanity and empathy. The bridge between those two economic systems is built through entrepreneurship. So when I found out about entrepreneurship in Boston, I realized I wanted to go back to Latin America to build Center for Entrepreneurships. When I was there, then I realized that entrepreneurship without capital is like having a stick that is always being pulled down. So I moved from academia into uh, entrepreneurship to a venture capitalist. Okay? And I think we always need to think how what we're doing is building wealth. And the last thing is we need to innovate. Lights. Close your eyes and think about how you do things differently. And innovation has something to do with targeted change. Lights back up. Thank you. Targeted change means that you increase your sales or your revenues, or you reduce your cost in terms to create a vacuum of knowledge. When you do that, then you need to use that wealth to distribute to others. And those are the lessons that I learned as a venture capitalist. Thank you very much.